trying to find a job right now in 2024 is as difficult as trying to lose weight. And not just any kind of weight, the one that gathers in the tummy, you know that fat that gathers in the tummy that's so hard to burn. A while ago, I was in this same situation and my daily routine was wake up by 4 a.m., cry a little, beg God for like 20 minutes. I wake up very early when everyone is still asleep to push in about 20 to 30 applications on LinkedIn and on Indeed. And then when I'm done, I begin my morning chores, have breakfast, and then I'm back at it. Push another 20, 30. The goal was 50 every day. Hmm. When I'm done pushing applications, I'll now take time again to review my email and see how many people have served me breakfast that day. Then I'll end with another God that beg and beg help me because <laughs> the race is not for the swift. Trust me, it was not a nice experience. The, the level of anxiety and depression and sadness that comes with looking for a job endlessly. Now, let's not even talk about the constant, unfortunately, that you are receiving back to back from all the job platforms you are applying on Indeed, LinkedIn and the likes. The back to back, unfortunately. And now I don't even know which one hurts the most. The unfortunately, we couldn't move forward with you. Or the ghosting, the fact that you don't even have guts to face me and tell me you don't want me. Like, come, tell me with your full chest. If you don't want me, you just tell me you don't want me. You don't have to ghost me. Like, face me. Tell me that you don't want me. Why are you hiding your face? Like, I don't know which one frustrates me the most. But you know what? That was a couple of years back. It was hard then. Now, it is harder. The situation is worse. If that's what you're going through right now trust me it is not you it's them it's the system it's messed up but it's more than that and so today in this video i'm going to tell you a couple of the reasons why it's hard for you to find a job and little things you can do here and there to make things better for you now let's go now first things i know in your mind you're like today i want to apply to 200 jobs nothing less nothing short mm. are you aware that most of the jobs that you are going to apply to today are ghost jobs yes there's something called ghost jobs ghost jobs are jobs list are job listings that companies put out with no intentions to fill or you need to know that some of the jobs that you're applying to don't exist so it's either they don't exist or they have been filled up and it has not yet been taken down or the company is just putting it out there to give that facade of they are recruiting and just to um, make investors like the idea of working with them just to make them look like they are in the market do you understand me so yes it's as good as empty promises a lot of the applications you are putting in are ghost jobs those jobs don't exist so it may seem as though nothing is coming out of it of course they're fake a couple of ways to identify ghost jobs so you don't spend your time so you don't come continue to waste your time applying to these jobs are one sometimes they may have been posted for so long if the company wants to hire somebody they hire the person within three two three months at most if they need that position filled two three four months at most so if a job is being is being there for so long there's a good chance it's a ghost job another thing could be you keep seeing this position pop up from this company over and over and over and over again with no updates when you apply no feedback nothing mm, there's a chance it could be a ghost jobs to save your energy by not applying to those now how to tell it particularly may not be easy so use your discretion okay or well, you should be aware that ghost jobs exist and it could be one of the reasons why nothing is coming out of them so if you've enjoyed this video so far it would be a good time to hit the like button now hitting the like button helps another person who may enjoy the video to find it do you understand so it's not really for me and hey, do it for that person not for me please drop a like so that somebody else that needs it that is struggling right now and being depressed can see it and be lifted okay thank you secondly employers are looking for people with senior senior experience for junior roles have you seen a job application that says entry role positions apply within requirements five years experience must be good with java must be good with sql must be good with dba must be expert in media must be expert in <laughs> and it's an entry role now the thing is most companies are trying to pay less for the best they want to pick the best person but at the same time they want to pay small money 
you understand? So they will put the role as entry, but who they really want there is not entry personal. They want somebody who is really, 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 really experienced. So you see how the problem is. So you now that's just coming into a new industry or that has like two or three years of experience, you apply for those roles and they're like, no, this is not who we want. But it's an entry position. And a lot of times we don't have that qualification or we don't have those requirements. How do you have a five-year experience and an entry role? It's like you need a job to get a job. Do you understand? So that's what most companies are doing right now. Tell me if you can relate in the comments. I have seen this a lot and I'm like, I will apply. Then in my time, I'll be like, ah, I will apply. For like me, five years, 10 years of experience. I only have this year and I'm, I'm going to apply whether you like it or not. So what I would encourage in those situations is apply regardless. If you see entry level positions that's asking for too much, just apply. It may be something that they may be able to wave for you if they see the other skills that you have or the other skills you can possess. Don't limit yourself to say, ah, this one is entry. They don't want me or they, they want five years. I only have three years. Okay. Apply regardless and see how it goes for you. But you need to understand that that's one of the reasons why it is hard these days because employers are being businessmen. Mm -hmm, that's the word. Let me not say greedy. They are trying to save money but get the best, the best, the best. And that affects us or a couple of us that's just starting. Another reason why you're not getting a job is AI. AI, yes. Initially, we thought AI and robots are com were coming to save us and help us make our life easy, make our jobs easy. Mm. Little did we know that they were coming for the jobs themselves. Like they wanted to come do our job and throw us out. And that's what's happening now. A lot of, a lot of things that you think you can do, AI can do it. Like I am shocked sometimes when I see tools at work or when I see the things that people do with some of these things. And I'm like, eh, eh, this was somebody's office. I remember one time, time, at the time when I was pregnant, I had a call appointment from my OBGYN and he, I had a call appointment from the hospital and it was an automated message. Now it was not just automated. It was AI telling me to confirm my, um, reminding me of my appointment, telling me to confirm my appointment, ask, telling me my parking details and interacting with me. And ideally that job would be the job of maybe a health administrator or an office administrator who will call you to tell you, okay, um, your appointment is on this date. Will you be available to attend? Okay, if you will not be available to attend, calling. Everything that I needed to do, I could do with this, this person online, with this robot online. And so tell me that, so some, that is someone's job that's gone, right? So AI is the problem. And so if you would ask me my two cents here, I would say you are in a job that a machine can, can take from you. Maybe it's time for you to level up, upskill, pivot, try something else, something more in the sciences, something more humanly, something more creative, something more that involves empathy and judgment, because that's one thing that AIs do not have. Okay. A robot talks like a robot. So maybe sciences, maybe health, maybe construction, maybe building, maybe things more man, humanly. Yeah. I think those are the, those are the places right now that and people can find more jobs. Now, the fourth reason why people are not getting jobs is that coupled with the ghost jobs I, talk, I talked about, companies that really want to hire are putting out job listings however they are going internally to, to to hire so you may see a you may see a job vacancy outside that says oh we need 10 people to fill these positions but in the real sense they want to go pick from their inner carcass first and then if they don't see from the inner carcass they then come outside we're like okay let's search within first if we don't find somebody within we then go outside and get somebody and the listings outside and somebody's applying thinking they will get it meanwhile they are prioritizing somebody within so it happens a lot. A lot of companies would want to prefer somebody who's within a company already before um, they go outside. And so that is some of the jobs that you are seeing. People within are feeling it. It's not as though you don't qualify. It's not as though, oh, they don't need you. They need you. It's just that mm, they have hidden motives. One of the motives being they want to employ people within, but then they put you as the backup plan i experienced this too with a daycare so this happened with a daycare i was trying to sign my son in for and so they had put up a banner saying that oh they wanted people to 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 um um sign up with them register with them and i was so excited because that daycare was just by my house the timing was perfect the environment was perfect i loved it and for the fact that i i was like the first Around, around the first day people to have seen them put that banner up. I was so sure that I was going to make it. I signed up ASAP. And a couple of months down the line, when they had built, the, they had completed the building and everything was set, 
they didn't send me any feedback and they were opening up like school was about to start so i had to reach out to them like ah you guys are opening up but i didn't get any feedback i submitted my application on the first day your banner came up and what they said was mm, they already had some parents who had put in their names way before they even thought of putting the banner up so that banner was just for fashion they had filled up their space before the banner came up so it, i got nothing out of it that is what it is there's an external posting but there's internal hire do you get that so it's not you i'm just letting you know okay and yes i say it all the time in case you don't like to hear it there's a skill gap the skill gap companies want a an entry level employee who can build a spaceship at the same time troubleshoot cyber security issues <laughs> like it's that crazy so they want you to be a a jack of all trade and a master at the same time they want you to know have a little of everything and these days people have so many qualifications and so many capacities that it will shock you what people can do even if they can do it in very little little bit it means that they can learn they can improve right so companies are no longer looking for one person who is a master at one thing but somebody who knows a little of everything so it try so consider improving your skills okay bridge setting gaps in your skills softwares technologies tools that you see that you see coming up in several job vacancies you can consider learning a couple of them and putting them on your cv to also increase your chance your skills will pay the bills let me just put that out there okay another thing is remote working a lot of people don't realize that this this is one thing that's affecting us but it's the truth the fact that you can now work remotely means that the pond to fish from is, is wider. So for example, if I live in Minnesota, for example, if I live in Minnesota, for example, or say I live in Toronto and a company in Toronto is, 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 um, has a job opening. Only those people within Toronto we can apply because it's on site, right? But now if it's a remote job, it means people in Ontario, people in Quebec, people in Nova Scotia, everybody can apply because you can work from anywhere. You can work from home. So the net becomes bigger and that means your competitors become bigger. You see? So sometimes look for roles that are on site because the truth is if you if you are applying to a role that's on site it means that you are, you are going to be dealing with a smaller number of people only people who are within that space will be able to qualify for that job do you understand someone who's who's applying from so uh, a very far place may not be able to qualify or may not be able to go for that job because they don't live around that area and that's why if you notice if you look if you look at jobs that have remote settings the number of people that apply they are in the hundreds and in the thousands why because it's remote everybody can apply but it's an on-site job that needs you to be in a particular space only a few people can go there so consider looking for more on-site roles than remote roles i know but you can't just have it all right it's either one thing or the other if you can if you can sacrifice your remote for having a job then why not consider more on-site roles because those ones your chances of getting them are quite higher one other thing i would advise is if you're applying to remote jobs don't just focus on the skills that you have focus on the remote tools that you can use so we have asana we have trello we have a couple of them that we used to um, interact with our colleagues from afar from um, virtually so try learning some of those tools and put them in your put them in your cv to so also let them know that you're not just willing to work remote you have the skills needed for remote work okay the hiring processes are changing. The hiring processes are changing. For one job application, I remember having a Zoom interview, but the second, for the first job interview, they say, do a video questionnaire of yourself. So there's this thing standing in front of you that's telling you, answer this question in two minutes and then you have to answer so quickly answer this in five minutes you have to answer so quickly there's some that come in form of questionnaires there's some in, that come in form of fill a form or do something some will say make a video of yourself make a video talking about yourself the hiring process has changed and it keeps evolving so sometimes if you are not familiar with this um 
if you are not familiar with these changing processes one may hit you and you will you, you are good at face-to-face -face interviews but you are not good at setting the camera in front of yourself and just talking so some of those things you need to practice because you are not sure which style or process the company would use to hire you or to um, evaluate you so ensure that you are familiarizing yourself with the different types of interview tactics or methods that there are and then you are practicing those assessment methods so practice the video recording style practice the questionnaire style pra practice the face-to-face -face interview style practice the virtual style i know a lot of people it has become a thing these days people don't ask you to come in for interviews until you are in the third or the fourth stage a lot of times they just want you to be on a video call with them where they talk all of those video effect how you look how you talk how you're staring at them your moods all of those things matter so try your best to master the interviews the interview skills of different forms of interview so that way you get a chance that if you get one interview you are able to follow through till the end I so these are the few reasons i know could be holding you back right now but i want you to know that, that however difficult it is right now it looks like the like the valley of the shadow of death it is literally hell i know but don't worry it is not impossible to get a job you just need some strategies some skills maybe some dash of luck but cons consistent pushing and in nine months in ten months in one year it's gonna happen for you okay don't give up if this video made you happy gave you any form of encouragement or hope i would really appreciate a like and if you can spare a moment please drop a comment tell me what does your current struggles are in the job market and some things you think will be useful for someone who's currently struggling thank you and see you in my next video Mwah.